Friday, two day fan mail. Lovely. I received this lovely chili pepper hat at Mall Madness and I'm gonna wear it whilst I answer questions and read some letters. No big events, I have no events currently planned. Uh, I will start working on my, uh, my schedule for next year. I have a couple of events that I want to go to, but I don't know that they have dates yet. I also do plan to do some significant travel, but again, no dates, news as events warrant. Fans some questions. Christopher Goudreau. What is your opinion on the X-Shot Insanity line? I like the concept. It's wild, it's crazy, it's above the top, everything attaches, it's all modular. Love that. Haven't gotten to actually play with them much. I did not get sent them. I was fully expecting to get that box of, uh, uh, because they sent me several of the previous boxes, but uh, apparently I wasn't on the list for that one. Tragic. Somebody write to X-Shot, tell them to send me stuff. If they want to. Um, but I like I like the idea. I like the look. I like that they aren't cartoonish. I got I did get to handle the minigun at Walcom's. I like it. I want one. Again, minigun. Why was I not on the list? I, I don't get it. Dark Lord of Sword. Will you be picking up the E-Wing set from Ahsoka now that it's finally canon? Since when was the E-Wing not canon? Wasn't it in the video games? Video games are all made by LucasArts. They're all canon. I don't know the rules of canon anymore. It's all changed. Um, no, probably not. Uh, I was never a huge fan of the E-Wing, so... Um, probably won't. I don't remember seeing it in Ahsoka. Pretty sure it was in there, I just don't remember seeing it. Probably should rewatch that. Maybe pay attention this time. Too busy eating popcorn. Nifomp. Which do you think is the coolest non-traditional lightsaber? I was always a fan of Darth Maul's, honestly. Uh, when we first see him use it, uh, we, I don't think we knew that it was double-edged yet. Um, they Back at Once Upon a Time, they didn't reveal all the good stuff in the trailers. Um, and we, so we only saw him using it with a single blade, but with a really wide handle, really long handle, which meant he had a lot more leverage, and it really showed uh, in his fight, his first fight with Qui-Gon, that uh, the fact that he had a much longer grip was giving him a lot more leverage, and he was throwing Qui-Gon's blade around, um, which is impressive because Qui-Gon was much, much bigger than Darth Maul because, uh, uh, cannot remember his name. Liam Neeson is much larger than Ray Park. Um, so yeah, I, I liked his. Big Picture 3. Would you ever purchase the Darth Vader Force FX lightsaber from the Black Series for cosplay use? Well, given that I don't ever plan to cosplay as Darth Vader, probably not. Morton Will. Are you planning on doing test games on the Nerf Ball format for your events? I don't know that we do exactly Nerf Ball. I do like the idea of having a basket large enough that you could potentially throw the ball into it and get it. We allow people to try that, but the baskets we have, there's no way anyone would ever be able to do it. But with a large enough basket, like if I made, you know, one using a full-on hula hoop and then a big net, you could potentially actually throw it and score from cover. Um, they had a whole, like, electronic scoring system with wristbands to keep track of how many tags you'd gotten. We'd probably do our standard of just using a bucket of ball pit balls in a basket that you, every time you respawn, you drop a ball in the basket, and then you would keep score that way. So it'd be a combination of you know, plant the flag and shatter battle. How many lives did you lose? How many goals did you score over a certain amount of time? I really like it as a format. Now, the concept really, I, I think it's a good idea. Um, from what I've heard from uh, people who have played it, um, it was a really good, very active format. You could play either trying to get the points for the ball or just shooting your opponents. Uh, obviously, there's some balance issues in how much do you make a goal worth versus, you know, obviously each tag is worth one life. So if people are getting tagged a lot, you'd need to scale up the points on a basket to make it worth trying to get as opposed to just turning into a shatter battle. Um, but I do want to try it. I will probably, uh, over the, the winter, one of my projects will hopefully be to make some baskets. It shouldn't be too difficult. And uh, give it a try next season. Game Mode Repository. I've picked up several hammer shots secondhand. What type of tuning do you suggest to get them performing back to a normal stock level? Well, the two things that are going to have worn out in a well-used 
blaster is going to be the spring, especially if it was left primed for a lot along, and just being repeatedly primed, it wears out the spring. And the O-ring, the, the foam O-ring between the cylinder and the, or the plunger tube and the cylinder, that you're going to need, need to replace. And you can just cut slices from a Mega Dart, is exactly the right size, it's just a matter of getting the right width. Um, you can also use craft foam, there's a couple of other options, but uh, Mega Dart is the easiest and works really, really well. Uh, replace those two things and you should be good to go. Um, you can also just, if you open up and like stretch the spring, it can help a little bit, but you're probably better off just replacing the spring. Um, I don't know of anyone that sells a stock spring, so you might end up with slightly more powerful, but shouldn't be too bad? Question mark. John Murcott. If I make a trip to the U.S., what events should I aim to attend? That's a that's a good question. Um, Mall Madness is fantastic, but it's it's a rough weekend. You're gonna need time to recover. Though any of the big events, you're probably gonna need time to recover. Um, I would aim for one of the big three-day events. So things like End War, Mall Mad or not Mall Madness, uh, Maryland Mayhem, Survival Fest, Ragnar Oktoberfest. One of those that has the, the competitive tournament, the HVZ, and the Nerf War all in, and often a convention of some kind, all in one weekend, so you get all of it all at once. Um, all in one location, that's probably the best bang for your buck if you're going to be visiting. Phantom, Phantom Zone Minecraft, would you consider making a new loadout series? Oh, I absolutely plan to make a new loadout series. I've been wanting to do one all year. Um, I have been assembling some very interesting loadouts and I've gotten most of them finalized. The problem is I do not have the ability to make the videos the way I want to make them by myself. I really need a cameraman and some mooks because I want to actually show the loadout in action and that requires me to have a cameraman and the ability to actually use the loadout in an actual competition, which means I'd need at least three people so we could do two, you know, teams of two in my arena using that loadout or, you know, use those loadouts when I host events. But then again, I need a cameraman to, to film it and I don't have a cameraman. So I have been struggling to figure out how to do it because I don't just want to show it top down. Here's my loadout. I want to show it on me and in action. And, and I'm trying to work out how best to do that. We shall see if I ever come up with a way. Swamp Cat is being silly in the attic as is her want. El Moonen. Absolutely sure I'm pronouncing that incorrect. What TIE fighter would you fly? Defender. And if, if you say anything but Defender, uh, you're probably wrong. Um, it was it was the best one from the video games. We see it briefly. It's been made canon in some of the, the TV shows, so they didn't show it to its full power. Those things were amazing. In the games, they were just downright broken because they were faster than A-wings, heavier armed than B-wings, heavier armored than Y-wings. They had beam weapons, they had slam overdrive, they had hyperdrives, they had missile launchers, they had two ion cannons and four laser cannons. They were ridiculous. And they were awesome. And uh, yeah, that would be my choice. AKA Gainsey. Would you mod another stampede to take two events? No. Um, the st I, well, well, Ire is my baby and was my first ever modded blaster and I absolutely loved it and it served me well for many, many years. I, I simply have better options now. My my current HVZ loadout, um, an FTL-3 with a proton pack, is just infinitely better than any Stampede mod I could ever build. Um, AEGs are fun, but they do have a lot of downsides in many ways. One is complexity. Um, uh, the other is delay in fire. There's It, it just wouldn't be my first choice for, to, to tr take to a travel event when I have better options. Am I fogging up? I can't tell if I'm fogging up. I might just be blurring. Ha <laughs> ha! Poons, are you a morning person or an evening person? And how does this affect your jet lag? I am more of an evening person, so that might be why going west works out better for me. I don't know. Um, but uh, that does make sense. That does make sense. I used to be a morning person. Then I got older. Huntress236. What is the current state of IR? IR is currently functional. I had 
been in the process of doing some serious upgrades, redoing her wiring, improving some of her internals. Uh, and I got some of that done. I got the metal gears in, the higher spring in. Uh, I did get it rewired for lipo, or I was in the process of it. And then uh, it got derailed because something arrived that I really wanted to use in ire, which was Domochevsky's magazine, or belt-fed magazine. And I wanted to make a video about that using ire. Um, and so I, I threw her back together and haven't gotten back to the upgrade since. But she is still functional, I think. I mean, she worked in that video, so... Alexander McPherson, have you read Jim Butcher's Windless Chronicles? I have not. I think I have the, the full set. I just haven't read them yet. Uh, second question, who is your favorite Dresden secondary character? Probably Bob, the talking skull. For reasons having nothing to do with the Dresden Files. Reginald Gemini has a series of questions. How would you make an over-under foam of nature? Just rotate the grip 90 degrees. I mean, you have to do a lot of other work to make that work, but they went side by side. They could have just as easily gone over-under. It's just a matter of the, the, the grip orientation. Um, can you talk about the Vulcan Sentry Gun? I can. It was a, a series. I actually had five of them that I wired up... Um, to a, a single control unit. They all plugged in using audio jack, um, and then that had a receiver for a remote switch. So you poke one of the buttons and it would toggle a switch inside the receiver that would then activate whichever um, Vulcan was plugged into it. And I think I had a splitter that you could plug two into, so poking one of them would make two of them fire. Thus, I had five. Um, really quite simple. I mean, it, it, I, it was the the nice thing about AEBs is that they are a single switch to fire. They don't have a rev switch and a fire switch. They just have one. So if you can wire something else to flip that switch, then it will fire. Uh, and so they didn't have like the Vulcan and like the Stampede. I think had motor braking, but the Vulcan and the Swarm Fire and the Speed Form and the the Swarm Bell Bell Speed Speed Bell something like that. Um, they didn't have motor braking in them, so you could wire up another switch and just say go, and you wouldn't have to worry about it shorting itself out, because, you know, you had motor braking on, on that switch. How would you make a Nerf machine gun emplacement using modern Nerf tech? I would probably use a proton pack, um, and either, again, use a remote switch, which you could do, but being that they require the rev makes it a little bit trickier. Um, honestly, the biggest thing that would change from how I did it back in the day and how I would do it now is that I would use a lipo instead of what I was using before, which I don't want to talk about. The way I was doing it before was not the good way to do it. I was doing it the hard way. Um, I would definitely use lipos now, and um, I, could, I could do so much better. Um, but a proton pack one would be fun. Again, the trick would be that you'd have to rev and fire, which is going to take time. Um, so you wouldn't want to use it for, like, a, tr a booby trap. But if you're just trying to hold down a, a, an area, um, I'd also try to make something that would actually make it traverse. I mean, I could, I could just mount it on a, uh, on a fan. <laughs> the, a, tra a fan with a traverse. Um, yeah. And finally... Would a Lewis gun be a good proton pack form factor? Define good. Um, there are some advantages. The fact that it has that massive barrel shroud meant you could have a really large barrel, so avoid barrel drag. Um, the shape of it, you could easily get the flywheels in there. It wouldn't be difficult. Uh, it wouldn't be my first choice because that, that ring ammo thing on the top would, would be purely cosmetic and would be kind of awkward um i'd be more inclined to go with something belt fed and then just feed the hose where the belt would normally go just for aesthetics um, you could even like glue a fake belt onto the top of it if you really wanted to or attach it somehow to make it look like it was a belt um but i mean if you really like lewis guns then sure there's no reason you couldn't use a lewis gun it would just be a lot of cosmetic work depending on what you're using for the base and that's really kind of the question I mean, if you're using like an airsoft Lewis gun or a prop Lewis gun that you're converting, sure. If you're trying to build it from scratch, that's eh, going to be a lot of work. But uh, no reason you couldn't. 
Liam Schumacher. Why do you choose to use full-length darts with your uh, heavy HVZ loadout over half darts? Uh, because my vests were all set up for full-length darts. My FDL-3 takes full-length darts. I could convert it to half, but... Um, I also, because the... And the reason I don't is the FDL that I got can take the 40-round magazines. So if I really wanted high-capacity magazines, I could do that. Um, but one of the primary reasons is they're cheaper, and you get almost none of your ammo back when you go to an HVZ, so I went with the ammo that was slightly cheaper, just so I wasn't losing quite as much ammo. The rival ammo for the Proton Pack is the most expensive of ammos that I use, um, and I get almost none of that back either, so... Yeah. And finally, Danty Combo. Have you ever considered the idea of a bolter that uses Mega Rounds? I have, and in fact, the person who designed this one, Mitch Essinger, built one, fully 3D printed, to the proper scale. Because this is scaled for a regular human. Um, the Astartes, the space marines who use these, were eight foot tall superhumans. And they used a much, much larger weapon. And he made one to proper scale with an Astartes, which in the hands of a human looks ridiculous and magnificent. And he actually does full... Um, uh, a tech priest cosplay and then has this massive bolter and it's really really kind of hilarious but i don't plan to build one myself haha -ha! i hit all right hit the frame anyway right i have two letters that i'm gonna open and read but first potential messages from our sponsors gotta gotta pay the bills somehow all right i have two letters here both from Mr. D. Bergen. I will try to open them in the correct... It looks like they may have been sent at the same time. Or they came to me at the same time. Anyway, letter one of two. Read me first. Not written in character. <laughs> Dear Captain Xavier, before I start the rest of the letter, I need to give a little context and background. I, re I recently got myself a matching pair of hyper pistols in my color scheme, green and black. I haven't properly field tested them yet, but I had an idea on how to do so, which leads me to the rest of the letter. So with all that being said, here we go. I, General Ace of your auxiliary, challenge you to a duel of pistols on the Makerspace property. Do you accept? Sure, why not? Do I, I mean, I'm, I, I can pick my own pistols. <laughs> I know what I'm gonna do, wield. <laughs> Stay tuned next week. <laughs> Rules and conditions are as follows. It will be the best of three rounds, starting with 30 paces, then increasing by 10 paces each round. Uh, round two at 20, round three at 10. We will each pick one of my hyper pistols. That's not how duels work, sir. You challenged me, I get to pick the weapons. We're gonna go with your hypers, just because it's gonna be easier. Uh, we will each pick one of my hypers with someone handing us darts at the start of each round. I'd like to take place at sunset on your property, specific date to be discussed later. I would like this to be filmed with members of the crew present, as many as possible. That I cannot promise. I mean, it's gonna depend on availability. If you win, I will surrender my auxiliary dog tags and only you will decide if I get them back. If I win, I want you to show me not just tell me how to become a member of the crew. Um, that's also not how that works, but I, I can tell you, it might not do you any good. Uh, seven, we will each take one shot per round. Whoever hits the other with a single shot wins the round. Another condition, if I win, I'd like to do a full tank dump on the range with tier. As long as you don't try to dump it in one go because that would probably burn out the motors, but yeah, you can fire tier. Uh, I know this is the second duel I've challenged you to, is it? Have we, have we met? Um, but I <laughs> thought this would be a fun experience. Hope you would agree. Do you accept this challenge and agree to the rules, conditions, Dustin Berg and AK General Ace? P.S. I'd also like to do the other duel, the lightsaber duel, uh, at around the same time as the pistol duel, but it would be, uh, but it can be discussed in private. Ah, uh, yeah! I'm game! Sure. Um... We will have to discuss details. Alright, now I will read the second one, which I totally didn't read first because I didn't read the backs of the letters and had them out of order at all! 
There you are. If you're reading this, that means that our temporal displacement device time machine has worked. It also means that it arrived sometime after Ragnarok Oktoberfest 2023. I'm hoping it arrived in time to possibly prevent what is to come. Um, probably not at this point. Um, this letter is meant to be a warning as well as a means to a favor from you for me. Before I ask the favor, I need to give you some backstory. I will try to include as many details as possible. However, my memory isn't what it used to be. Being over 150 years old will do that to you. Or was it 200? I've lost track of time around here. Last time I checked, the current year was 2147. However, it's been a while since I was able to check, so take that with a grain of salt. I hope the following backstory helps paint a vivid picture. I also hope it helps explain our unintentional linked history. Please don't hate me for explaining it this way. I never intended it to happen the way it did. A long, long time ago, before the world turned into this radioactive wasteland, I was a different person. My name was General Dwayne Ace Connorson. I was the director and creator of something called SIGMA, Special Investigations Government Military Agency. You really wanted your acronym to be SIGMA. This organization eventually became known as what you will know as SIGMA Corp. How that happened, kind of a long story, so buckle in. Sigma, my organization, was meant to be a symbol of good hope instead of the epitome of evil it eventually became. I'll never forget the day that my organization fell. It was just like any day until our enemy, the Clan of the Red Scorpion, somehow found the location of our secret base. At this point, I'll disclose the location since there's not much left anymore. The old location was in what was once Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. It was actually beneath it, but that's beside the point and the story for another day. My point is that the KRS found us even though I thought it was impossible. There was un an explosion which caught us off guard as explosions would. We went to high alert by going to our battle stations. We were prepared for this somewhat. I always had plans in place for pretty much anything that could happen. However, the clan had the numbers to defeat us. Before we were battle ready, I ordered all non-combatants to evacuate to the MAC, Mobile Air Command Center Protocol. They were all able to... And up in the MAC, to which I left Jim, leader of my J-Squad, in charge. He was able to get to the MAC airborne while my team and I led the combat-trained operatives against the clan. Jim, along with my lead tech op, Blaine, knew their orders, but the clan was prepared for it. They shot down the MAC, which killed everyone on board, including Jim and Blaine. I'll admit I was a little emotional at the loss of Jim and Blaine, but my second-in-command, G told me not to let their sacrifice be in vain. He was right, of course, so we continued to fight on. We kept fighting for what felt like hours, which it was, but not as long as I thought. They started to overrun us. In that moment, I told two other officers, Danny, Donnie, Donnie and Tim, to lead some of the agents and operatives out the secret tunnel, which they did. They also took with them another one of our team members, Hammer, who was uh, acted as muscle to those that got out. The team members that were left with me were G, TP, Flynn, and Royce. Those four and the other three made up the original eight of Sigma with me. Just a little detail that I wanted to mention. So it was myself, G, TP, Flynn, and Royce, along with a squad of our best fighters to take on the incoming swarm of clan members. Meanwhile, Donnie, Tim, Hammer were trying to lead the majority of agents through the secret tunnel to the train to get out to our rendezvous point. But again, the clan was ready for us. My three team members were able to load the train, but five minutes before the train before the train exploded and the tunnel collapsed. I felt the rumble of the explosion and knew instantly that it, that they were all dead. They kept We kept fighting though, but not for much longer. Eventually all that was left was myself and my remaining team members and the clan eventually took them as well, leaving me only, leaving only me alive. 
I was fully prepared to go out fighting alongside my team, but the clan didn't take me out and make me a martyr. They went... They knew that all those who worked with me, not for me, but with me, would continue to fight on. They didn't want me dead, but they wanted me to suffer. So the head of the clan, Metallic Scorpo, Metscorp, took my left arm as a trophy and then left, let his soldiers, a few at least, to attack me as well. Out of them, one of them tried to slit my throat ended just damaging my vocal cords, leaving me with a rather gnarly scar on my neck and a raspy voice. Three other clan members shot my right leg, leaving me with a slight limp, and finally one operative stabbed me through the right arm. After they were done with me, they set my base on fire and made me watch as it burned. They wanted me to suffer. They got what they wanted. After the base fire went out, they just left. They thought they had won, but I still had one trick up my sleeve. I had a secret bunker in the base that was unaffected by the fire. I found the entrance, powered it on, and told my AI assistant, Tony, to reach out to all my operatives that were still in the field to meet at our new location for one final battle against the KRS. I told them to meet in the country of Wakanda, which is where I was able to get my replacement arm. I won't go into too much detail, but that battle was... But of the battle, but needless to say, all my fear relatives and allies that showed up didn't make it. The clan still kept me alive, so I would live with the knowledge that all those people were dead because of me. Forgot to mention, before they set the fire, they took a copy of my hard drives, meaning they had all my designs for weapons, technology, vehicles, etc. Not only did they make me suffer by killing everyone that I knew and loved, but they sold my designs to make a corporation. A corporation, mind you! profited on war. They changed the name from Sigma Organization designed to protect the world to Sigma Corp, an evil corporation for blood and war. But, both of which I am sure you are familiar with. I am well familiar with the deprivations of Sigma Corp. Now that you have some understanding, I need to tell you how you and I met, or rather, how we will meet. After Sigma Corp was formed, I had to change my appearance at least slightly. My force was changed... My... My face was changed a little bit to more resemble my father, but I didn't want my scars fixed. I knew that sounds a little bit weird, but I wouldn't have it felt like myself. So my two main scars, the one on my neck and the three lines scar on my left side of my face. I also changed my name, which you will see in the end of this letter. Back to the point, though after my appearance was changed, I was able to start a resistance movement against what the clan had grown to become. They called ourselves the Bringers of Chaos. There are nine of us at first, but we grew to be massive movement. However, by the time Sigma Corp's super virus had spread beyond containment using and sub uh, subsidiary company Night Industries, the virus spread to multiple locations across the country, so they decided to nuke it all. I believe you're familiar with that decision. I was there when Pullman fell. Forgot to mention again, your crew was a part of the Bringers of Chaos movement. Were we? First as mercenaries, then as a motorcycle club. <laughs> I believe that the crew MC hasn't been established at the time you're reading this. Ha! <laughs> I got a motorcycle! <laughs> but maybe it will be at some point. After seeing how we fought as the bringers of chaos, you decided to patch the first nine members, myself included, over, meaning we became members of the crew. Did you now? Uh, don't say, get me wrong, I very much enjoyed being part of the crew, but I have to admit they were something about being part of the first nine of the Bringers of Chaos that I enjoyed a bit more. Well, that's fair. Anyway, back to the Sigma Corp and Night Industries. After containment of the super virus failed, they dropped the bombs, nuking the country and part of the world. I was able to survive the fallout by finding my old bunker and holding up there. Many years had passed by this point. I'm not sure what allowed me to survive everything. Whether it was sheer willpower or the weird alien substance that mixed with my DNA. Uh, another story for another time. But something kept me alive for a long time. Tony, my AI in the base, was able to pick up or find 
can't remember which, a strange frequency, like a radio frequency of some kind. Turns out it was a podcast frequency, something called the Afterworlds Podcast. This gave me the idea to head out west to possibly find other survivors. It took quite a long time to do, but I was able to find them wherever my journeys... Uh, however, my journey was long and strenuous. I heard rumors that you and part of your crew were alive. I tried to reach you, but the time I made it out there was once Oregon, you were gone. I want to take this time to apologize to you for what Sigma Corp did. If it was still the original Sigma, I guarantee things would have been different. Now for the favor I need to ask you. I need you to find me, the younger version of me in your time, and tell me to kill, not capture, Metallic Scorpo when I have the chance. Don't ask me how, but you'll need to convince me of this, which shouldn't be too hard, hopefully. I have no problem telling you to kill somebody. Uh, if that version of me is successful, maybe this radioactive wasteland can be prevented. If not, if I'm not mistaken, my younger self just also sent you a letter, something about a pistol duel, I think, but I don't know for sure. After sending this letter, one of two things will happen. Either an army of undead mutated creatures will swarm me and try to kill me, or I'll be able to escape an alternative universe timeline. I'm hoping for the latter, but anything could happen. Find me and warn me of this. Please, the whole world could depend on it. De Soren Rouge, the last surviving member of the crew MC and formerly General Ace. P.S. Two more things. The name is pronounced Du Soren Rouge. Hey, I got it right, I think. Two, an alternative version of myself might visit you at some point in the future. Some name as... <laughs> someone known as De Soren Rouge, but I believe he calls himself... The Nerf Mandalorian. Pretty sure I've met a Nerf Mandalorian. Maybe a different Nerf Mandalorian. Right. That was fun. Yes, uh, people are in fact welcome to visit the Makerspace. It really is just a matter of coordinating with me. Uh, if I'm available when you're passing through or what have you. Uh, that is why I built the place, so yeah. Reach out to me. We can, we can try to figure something out. Um, it, now's not a good time. It's cold and damp here, which does not make for much fun. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, if you have questions that you would like to ask, by all means, ask them in the uh, comments of this video, because that's where I pull the comments from when I go to film the next one. And if you want to send me something, the mailing address is also in the description. Stuff is welcome, though I don't need stuff. I'm rapidly running out of room for stuff. I do like getting physical letters, and ones written in character are just awesome. All right. I think that's it. Thank you for watching. Did I? I did. Okay, good. That, that was fantastic. I think I may have read them out of order. They weren't, wait, oh no, there is instructions on the back. Oh no, you don't need to know this. I can read, I can do this in a different order. I have editing on my side, ha <laughs> ha.